This is a SETV tutorial on the JVC GY HM100U camcorder. So let's start with the controls on the side of the camcorder. This switch right here is the ND filter. You can turn it on for really bright days outside or you can switch it off for inside shooting or cloudy days. It's essentially sun shades for the camcorder. This other switch is the focus and zoom and by switching it down to zoom it turns this ring into a zoom ring. Switching it up to focus turns that ring into a focus ring. So it's a dual functioning ring. This button is the autofocus and manual focus button. Uh, by pressing it you can switch it from autofocus or manual focus. The next button is the full auto button. Basically what that does is a press of that will change the camera settings to fully automatic. Everything from the gain to the white balance. Also by pressing it you can switch over to manual mode on the camcorder. You'll see down here there's a gain switch, there's low, medium, high settings. This is really helpful if you just don't have enough light. I uh, wouldn't suggest using it all the time, but it is very helpful for low light settings. The next switch is the white balance switch. You notice there's a B, an A, and a preset setting. Those are helpful if you're going from multiple rooms, like room A or room B, and you can set them to specific white balances for each room. The preset is a setting that's actually controlled in, in the camera to a certain temperature, a Kelvin temperature. One of the last buttons on this side that you'll use is this A slash B button. And all that really does is switch what memory card the camera is recording on since you can use up to two memory cards. The white balance button is actually kind of hidden on this camcorder, but it's right in the front. You'll see AWB button. That is actually what you press when you go to white balance the shot. As I said before, the A slash B button does control these two slots. These are where you would be putting both your SD cards or only one SD card just by flipping down the door like that and inserting them then. If you open up the viewfinder, you'll find another set of buttons as well as some of the video outputs. The buttons we're going to talk about are the display button, the menu button, and the cam slash media button. The display button will toggle the display on the viewfinder on or off. The menu button will display the internal menu in the camera where you can change some of the settings, which we'll look at later. The cam slash media button will go into the media page in the viewfinder where your, all your clips will be stored. The component out input is where you would connect a component cable to a high def TV. And the AV out is where you connect an AV cable to a standard definition TV. This is the back of the camcorder. You'll see to turn the power on, flip this switch. You'll see the lights blink and the screen should come on. To record something, press the record button. And to stop recording, you can press it again. Over here, you'll see the iris button, the shutter button, and the AE shift button. The adjuster knob slash volume knob will be used to adjust the iris shutter or the volume of the playback speaker. The battery is easily removed by just pressing this button and pushing over to the right and pulling it out. Going back in, in the reverse order, pushing it in, sliding it over to the left and hearing the click. So here we are in our green screen room, we're going to go into some manual adjustments. Make sure you're in manual mode. The iris is set by pressing the iris button and then using the volume slash adjustment knob to go up or down or open or close the iris. As you can see I'm doing it now. Uh, you'll see the image gets darker or brighter. The next is the shutter button. If you hit that you'll see the shutter come up right underneath the iris 
setting. You can adjust the shutter by going up and down on the adjuster knob. And you also see the image gets darker or lighter. But really what this is changing is how, how fast the image is processing through the camera. Uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a second. As you can see, it almost gives it a slow motion effect because the image is processing a lot slower uh, at a lower shutter speed. The next thing is the AE shift button, which is right underneath the shutter button. Really what that activates is um, some in-camera effects that can be useful, but you won't use them all the time. Now let's go into some of the menus inside the camera by pressing the menu button. So here in the menu, you'll see a couple different sub-menus. One's going to be camera process, file format, system select, record mode, is the clip continuous record off, and I'm going to show you the ones you really have to pay attention to. One of the first things being the file format. If you're working on a Mac, you're going to want it on the QuickTime file. If you're working on a PC, you may want the MP4 file. It's just important to see which one it's on. Here in the system select menu, you'll see that you can shoot 1080p video or 720p. There's also some PAL settings, the 50 to 25 you'll see, and 24 frames. You can also shoot with these cameras. I would suggest the 720-60-30 setting. It's just going to be a lot easier to work with uh, when you're editing. Also, there's the SP and HQ settings if you have it on 60p, which is normal, I would say normal motion, 30p you can get a little bit more record time with. I would suggest the 1280-60p SP setting for the longest record time and best quality. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to format a memory card. You're going to scroll down the media settings and inside the media settings menu you'll see a button that says format and that's pretty much if you need to completely erase the card and if I was a card in there, I would be able to format it to a completely clean card. And that's if you absolutely need to erase all your footage. The next is the cam slash media button. This menu will hold all of your clips that you just filmed. And you'll be able to use the toggle switch to kind of go through them and preview them. Here we have the audio block. And on the audio block, the channel 2 input, you can switch from input 1 or input 2. Input 1 being the stereo input for whatever mic's in input 1. Or input 2 is where you'll switch it to if you're going to add another mic. It basically splits the channels from left and right. The other part you want to look at is the audio input. Uh, what that is, is actually what kind of mic you're putting into this input. Which, whether it's a line feed from a PA, a mic... That, ha that has its own battery source or a mic plus 48 volts which is a mic that requires some sort of phantom power. The next thing would be to set your audio level. There's two ways to do it. You can set it auto and it will automatically set your levels but sometimes you may need to manually set the levels if something's too loud or too soft. So you can switch it over to manual and you can manually adjust the knobs of channel 1 and channel 2 to whatever number and that would actually represent the level that it's on. On the other side of the audio block, you'll see the two inputs for the XLRs. And to remove them, simply just press on that push button. It pops right out. And in reverse, you can pop it right back in. On the same side of the camcorder, you'll find this rocker zoom, another way to zoom the camera in and out. So that pretty much does it for the JVC GYHM100U tutorial. Hope it helps you guys out in the field. And thanks for watching. Let's get back to that music. <laughs>